After stops in Toronto, Baltimore, and Houston, the White Sox Roadshow find themselves in Arlington, Texas, as the White Sox battle the surging Texas Rangers right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Good evening, everyone. Chuck Swirsky filling in for the Hawk, Ken Harrelson, joined alongside Steve Stone, former Cy Young Award winner, and the American League West is getting hotter and hotter, Steve. And Texas is playing better and better. They've won eight of their last ten, and it's because of a couple of guys who are hitting the baseball, notably Prince Fielder. Lost all of last year with neck surgery. This year he's hitting everything in sight. He's got ten home runs. He's driven in 38. He's been in the mid-350s. 360s most of this early going and Prince has found it again and since he's been a designated hitter it hasn't hurt him at all. Now this team surprisingly is just 9 and 14 at home so maybe we can take advantage of him but with an old face in Prince Fielder comes a new face in Joey Gallo. Gallo making his major league debut those numbers are from double A where he had 314 hit nine home runs drove in 31 struck out 49 times this guy has astonishing power in fact last year it was Chris Bryant and Joey Gallo one and two in the minor leagues Bryant with 43 home runs Gallo with 42 he's here tonight he's not going to stay but he's got big pop all right Steve so let's talk White Sox baseball your assessment of this road swing. I think the road trip has been pretty good. In fact, when you're four and four going on this kind of trip, you'd have to say things are working out very well, and they're working out very well for the Sox. Now, things are getting a whole lot better as we move along, and as you can see, runs per game four, home runs five, but the ERA is exceptional. It's 368 for the whole pitching staff. The starters, however, at 282, and the big key, score first, because 80% of the time, four of five times, if the Sox score first, they're going to win the game. So this ends a long road trip. You take two out of three here. It's a very successful trip. And behind Jeff Samarja, that's what the Sox are looking for. Absolutely. So it's the Rangers and the White Sox in the first of three here in Arlington, Texas. First pitch coming up in a moment right here on Comcast Sportsnet. to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Audi. Truth in engineering. Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. And by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. 
Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to Globe Life Park here at Arlington, Texas. It's a very warm day. It usually is this time of year. And the Texas Rangers take the field, and the Rangers come into this one at 26 and 25, five and a half games in back of Houston in the AL West. Let's take a look at how Robin's going to line up our socks for the game tonight. Adam Eaton leading it off. Then it's Melky Cabrera in the two spot with Adam LaRoche playing first base and hitting third. Javi Garcia in right field and clean up. The designated hitter is Connor Gillespie. Then it's Alexi Ramirez, Gordon Beckham, and Giovanni Soto, who usually catches Jeff Samarcha and Carlos Sanchez rounding it out. The defense and how they'll line up. Beyond Colby Lewis, Delano De Shields in left field, Leonis Martin in center. Then Shinsu Chu is in right field with Joey Gallo at third, making his major league debut. Elvis Andrews at shortstop, Hanser Alberto at second, Mitch Moreland at first, Robinson Chirinos, a former member of the Chicago Cubs, behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Colby Lewis. He's off for his 11th start. His ERA 470, a 4 and 3 record. As you can see, a few more hits and in innings pitched. He's got very good control, and left handers have really hurt him this year. The umpires for the game this evening. Ed Hickox behind the plate. Mike Estabrook is at first. The crew chief, Dana DeMuth, is at second, and Paul Nauert is at third. So Texas, who got off to a horrible start, only to go 19 and 11 in the month of May, suddenly putting it all together. And there's a look at the brand new manager for this team. You had to talk with him before the game. Jeff Bannister, yeah. What would you, you think about him? You know, I'm impressed with him. He is into analytics. And uh, Steve, he has a pretty good sense of what's going on here in his rookie campaign. And we're going to explore the world of a rookie manager throughout our broadcast tonight right here on Comcast Sports. And, you know, Steve, I've worked with you now over a week. Are you proud of me? I have not once called you Bill Winnington. I think it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> And there's a look at the skipper on the other side, Robin Ventura, who's hoping that his ball club continues on a pretty good, solid road trip so far. So they've thrown the ball around the infield, and we're ready to play baseball, and that means I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Chuck Swirsky. So we have Adam Eaton leading off. Now with Gallo at third, Steve, real quickly, would you drop a bunt to test him early? I certainly would, and he's supposed to be a little better fielder than most people think. I know he's taking some ground balls early today. He'll find that this is a very fast infield, although not as fast as it was last year. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. Eaton on this road swing, seven for 33. Uh, but he has hit safely in six of his last seven games on the season. Two homers, six RBIs, batting 232. And he swings and goes the other way. The left fielder, DeShields, running to the line, makes a nice grab. The line of DeShields is exceptionally fast. So this is a guy that was picked up in the Rule 5 draft, a minor league free agent. And he runs the first one down. Yeah, he was property, as you mentioned, Steve, of Houston. And he has been a pleasant surprise, to say the least, for this Rangers ball club. Melky Cabrera stepped in. He sits safely in 7-8 on the season. A homer in 17 RBIs, batting 241. His lone home run came May the 6th against Detroit, and we will see Detroit in Chicago over the weekend. Make your plans to attend the ball game. Should be a festive time every time the Tigers and Sox get together. Kobe Lewis's best pitch is a slider. If that slider is not working, he's not working very well. He's got an average fastball. He throws a curveball also. Cabrera swings. That's well hit. But an easy play for the center fielder, Martin, who beats the catch. Very athletic in the outfield. Let's take a look at our picks to click. Chuck slash Hawk with Alexi Ramirez. <laughs> I'm taking Melky. And the crew is taking Gordon Beckham as it's red hot between the crew and me to this point with Hawk slash Chuck. Tailing. Well, I've got a few games to make up for the Hawk, who but, will be back shortly. But it's early yet. It is early. Adam LaRoche at the plate. He's fifth in the American League and walks with 30. He's ninth in the AL, striking out with 56. Beautiful night for baseball here in Arlington, Texas. All three not affairs here. 
Here's Colby Lewis. And a routine ground ball for the second baseman, Alberto, with the easy toss to first. One, two, three for the White Sox. Bottom of the first. Coming up next right here, Comcast Sports Day. Rangers, Delano DeShields to lead it off, and it's Chu and Fielder at the top with Moreland, Andrus, and Gallo in the middle. Chironis, Martin, and Alberto round it out. The defense behind Jeff Samarja left to right. It's Cabrera, Eaton, and Garcia in the outfield with Beckham, Ramirez, Sanchez, and LaRoche in the infield. Giovanni Soto behind the plate, and our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Jeff Samarja. On for his 11th start, he's 4 and 2, his ERA 384. Things are getting a whole lot better for Jeff these days. The Shields hit the play facing Samarja. He's only 22 years young. No homers, 11 RBIs, batting 274. You have to watch the bunt from the Shields, and he'll do it either way. He'll push it to the right side or drag it to the left. Samarja had a fine month of May, Stephen. He just keeps getting better and better. He goes deep into the ball game. He's getting most everything over the plate. But you walk this guy and you're throwing a double. To Shields' father, Delano, you saw him play many a night in the National League. I did, and his claim to fame was traded even up for Pedro Martinez. Wow. The Shields going to the Dodgers. Pedro Martinez, who they didn't think was big enough to start, going to Montreal. Dodgers were wrong on that. Just a little bit. How about that? With all due respect to De Shields. I Martinez hit the Hall of Fame. Pretty, pretty good trade for those Montreals. 2 2 pitch from Samarja coming up. This Texas ball club finds themselves five and a half out in the West. They had a great month of May. Won 10 out of their last 12. They've won three straight, winning the last three of that series with the Red Sox. They won 19 games in the month of May. Fly ball hit to the right, LaRoche covering, and it is out of play. You can pretty much tell which way the wind blows. It looks like the wind is blowing straight in. What happens is it comes in, swirls around, goes right back out to right and right center field. It'll blow across also and take everything hit to the right side out of the field of play. Right now the wind is a little, a little brisk, and when it blows like that, this is a very easy place for a left hand hitter to hit a home run although they tell us this year it's not near as lively as it's been in recent years. So you can credit Mother Nature for that. Three balls two strikes. Rangers averaging 30,000 435 per game. And they got a huge lift the other night a sellout new sellout when Chi Chi Gonzalez made his major league debut. We're not going to see him in this series he's going to pitch. For the Rangers after we leave town. His well hit ball to right center field. And that is going to be caught. 
What a play by Garcia. That would have been a triple if it gets over Abby's head. It didn't. And normally when the wind blows out, this would have gone over his head. But he sprints straight back, playing very shallow in right field, never believing that the shield's going to hit it that far. But hit it that far, he did. Nice play by Abbasayil as he leads things off. He'll bring on Shin Su Chu. In his second year with the Texas Ball Club, veteran outfielder. Working on Steve Stone. The second year of a seven year, $130 million deal. They're paying him a whole lot of money to do better than he's been doing. And he goes the other way. Cabrera racing in, and he dives and tumbles and makes the catch. Interesting outfield play. It was going to be a routine play, but what happens is the ball is knocked down to left field, and Melky, unfamiliar with this win, he drifts back and then comes on and makes the play. I don't think he saw it right away. By the time he did, he came and got it, and I think what he's doing is he wants some sunglasses. The reason is that that sun that sets, it sets right in the left fielder's eyes beginning of the game. In fact, what they did was with Chu coming here, he was a left fielder and he kept on missing balls early in the game. He just couldn't see him just like I believe Melky couldn't see that one. So they moved Chu to right field, making it a lot easier for him. Still, he's not the best outfielder around, but Melky picked up that ball late and came on and got it. But that shows you how difficult this is early in the ball game. Good stuff, Steve. Thank you. As a fielder at the plate number one in the American League in batting 359. This is well hit. And over the outstretched uh, glove of Sanchez. And right field Garcia fires it in play and fielder holds on to first. Give you an idea of what kind of player Prince Fielder is. He was playing first base. And he wasn't playing it all that well. And he went to Jeff Bannister and he told him, look. There is no doubt we are a better team with Mitch Moreland playing first base defensively and me going to be a DH. And so Jeff said, well, I mean, if you feel comfortable doing that, he said, I'll give it a try. We'll see what happens. They are a better team with Moreland playing first. And so he is now their DH. How many players would do that, Steve, where they would check the ego at the door and say, listen, you know what? He's better than me. Put him on at first. Not a whole lot of them, but the ones who really want to win and Prince does that. Those are the guys that do things like that. Oh one pitch with two out from Samarja to Moreland. This is well hit and another base hit to right field. So the Rangers with runners at first and second with two outs. Fit tracks will show you that that's a fastball and it's on the outer third. And Moreland, who is normally a full hitter, just crushes it to right field. So Jeff, who's had periodic problems in the first inning, trying to get out of this one without giving up a run. And the man you're looking at, Elvis Andrus, stands in between Jeff and doing that. Andrus came up with the Rangers in 2009. He's a two time All Star. Stepping in with two on for the Rangers and two outs here in the bottom of the first. Andrus on the season, however, batting only 235. What kind of a ball player are we looking at the volume of his performance as a major league ball player of the years? Well, you're talking to a guy, a guy that has all kinds of talent defensively at shortstop and up until recently was actually hitting the ball very well. He came out of the Atlanta Braves organization. It was a huge trade they made at the time. And they got a whole lot of talent back. Atlanta usually doesn't give up. A whole lot of folks in trades but. Andrus is one of those guys they didn't want to give up but they had to. Little chopper to Beckham spins throws to second safe. The bags are loaded now for Texas. 
Gordon kept that ball out of left field, but with the speed of Andrews, and he's got a lot of it, there was no play at first base. So you have to credit Moreland with hustling in the second. Gordon really only had one play because he was pulled wide of the bag and back. So you couldn't very well even think about third. And Moreland hustling the second beats the play, so it loads him up. For Joey Gallo, how about this? His first major league at bat with the bases loaded and two outs here in the bottom of the first. My goodness. Here's the veteran Samarja against a rook, making his first major league AB. Inside Gallo stands 6'5, 230 pounds. A lot of comparisons with his boyhood friend in Vegas and Chris Bryant of the Cubs, who is at 6'5, 215, both highly touted. Actually, Gallo says he's weighing 240 these days. He's only 21 years old, has astonishing power. He'll strike out a third of the time. But because Adrian Beltre went down, he sprained his thumb, actually dislocated it. He popped it back himself, but it was lacerated, so he's out for at least two weeks, maybe longer. Here's the pitch. And it goes through to right field off of LaRoche. One run is in, two runs are in, and Joey Gallo is safe at first, and we have runners at the point of the first and third. How do we get a roll that, Steve? We will have to see. The scorekeeper is a native of Arlington Heights and a lifetime Sox fan. That one looked like it took a bad hop. But we'll have to see if they call it a base hit. If they do, it'll be his first two runs batted in. The game a base hit and two runs driven in, so he's the kid who's batting a thousand. So his first major league at bat with the bases loaded, and he comes through with a two run single to right. Rangers with a two nothing leader, and they're going to save the ball, and that's going to go. He will be in his keeps for the rest of his life. What a moment for Joey Gallo. Meantime, White Sox have got to put the clamps here on this Ranger ball club. Torino set the plate. Takes a cold strike. Torino's is not hitting much for an average, but he does have pretty good power. And in talking with a whole lot of people around this ball club, Dave Magan and one of them, he's the hitting coach. He said that Torino's has had a habit of getting some big hits for them, especially late. Smart deals and they hit him. And Torinos is down. He's going to feel that when he's shaking it off. Where did he catch him, Steve? He either got him in the hand or the wrist, but he's going to feel the effects of that one. That fastball riding up and in. Looks like you've got him. I think you've got him in the wrist. I think you're right. In any event, he's going to first base, walking slowly. It's on his throwing hand. And it did. It got him right, right very close to what they call the hamate bone, and a lot of guys will fracture that. Obviously, they are hoping that he's okay. It does go numb, then trainers will ask you to grab their hands, see how much power you can generate. That's what he's doing now, and says he's okay. Catchers are a very, very tough breed. So Torino stays in the game, and it loads him up again. Yes. After uh, Joey Gallo in his first major league at bat, singled on a ground ball to right, scoring Fielder and Moreland. Bases loaded for Texas here in the bottom of the first. Rangers already with four hits. Martin at the plate. Very good athletic center fielder. And 
and this is out of play. Texas starts the night as we mentioned five and a half out behind Houston in the American League West and maybe other than Oakland this uh, division Steve up for grabs and Texas is starting to heat up at the right time. They won eight of their last ten. They're playing good solid baseball. And Prince Fielder is leading the way. One one pitch. That's ball hit. And on the short hop it bounces off Garcia. And fires back to the infield, but the Rangers doing some damage here in the bottom of the first inning here in Arlington off Jeff Samarja. RBIs 15 and 16 for Leonis Martin, a native of Cuba. That looked like a slider down. And Martin with a base hit. No chance at all on a sinking line drive for Avi to catch that one. So we talked about the troubles of Jeff Samarja in the first inning. And here it is once again with a four spot. Texas with a four nothing lead on five hits here in the bottom of the first and the first of three. This all happening with two out and nobody on. It's going to bring on the second baseman, Hanser Alberto. Just recalled, played in the Red Sox series. Needs to be seen what type of major league ball player we're looking at. Although the book on Alberto is he's a pretty good defensive player. They weren't expecting any hitting at all in the minor leagues. In fact, the quote was they could knock the bat out of his hand, but for whatever reason, he was hitting very well in the minors and he's carried it over here. Runs at first and third, and that ball is going to be tracked down by Garcia in right field, and the inning is over. But the Rangers come up with four in the first and lead the White Sox. In town starting at six with Blackhawks pregame live and flip to CSN Plus after the game for a locker room reaction highlights and a whole lot more. Blackhawks postgame live, Stanley Cup final game one. Coverage starts at six on CSN Chicago. There's a look at Colby Lewis, who last year went 10 and 14. His ERA was up over five in 29 starts. He did complete a couple of games. Last year was a very difficult year for these Rangers. They use their disabled list more frequently than anybody else. It was absolutely amazing. Garcia will lead off here in the top of the second after Texas put up four in the first. Go ahead, Steve. Texas last year used their disabled list 26 times. Not only that, but they lost 2,281 player days, which is 833 more than the next closest club, which was Arizona. No wonder they finished last 31 games in back of the Angels. 
Steve, not only that, to add what you were seeing, and, and you were spot on. They recorded their fewest amount of wins in a 162 game schedule since 1985. Garcia with a slow roller to first. Love down the play. Bob Moore moves step on the back. And that 85 season, Doug Rader was replaced early in that campaign by Bobby Valentine. And they've had some big time managers go through here, Steve. Let's see, they've had Ted Williams, who was the first manager for the Texas Rangers, coming in from Washington in 71. Whitey Herzog was here. Billy Martin was here. Bobby Valentine was here. Don Zimmer was here. Buck Showalter, Johnny Oates. Still looking for that first World, World Series win. They've been there. Just couldn't get over the hump. So for the White Sox now, it's going to bring on Connor Gillespie, the designated hitter, who had a couple of hits as a DH against Houston. And prior to the ballgame, I asked Connor about being a DH, whether or not he went into the uh, locker room, saw the video, or whether he stayed engaged in the dugout. And he said, I stayed right here in the dugout. There's a lot to be learned if you're going to watch the game. Two and there's something that's really important, Chuck, and that is there's a lot of people that will tell you that watching the game is of critical importance, when in reality, it's observing the game that's even more important. You can watch the game. You can take a look at what's going on, and especially if you took a look the other day at Dallas Keuchel and you were a left-handed pitcher and you watched what he did. If you were observing what he did and realized that he made everything move, kept everything down, got ahead of all the hitters, you could learn something from him. I think... If you're a hitter, you can learn something for guys who are close to you and what they do. But you have to observe the game. And I think that's getting to be, unfortunately, a lost art. This is something Jeff Bannister, the manager of the Rangers, was talking about prior to the ballgame. He wants Beltre, ideally, organically, to sit next to Gallo. Here's Ramirez. Rips it to left field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit for Alexei. Who's been struggling? That's an understatement. Coming in three for his last 33, but he's on first. He got one up, and even though it was away, he certainly likes the ball up high. When our pitch tracks, we'll show you that this was a slider that didn't do a great deal. Colby Lewis has to have that slider working consistently. When it's good, he's a good pitcher. When it's not good, the rest of the stuff is just adequate, and he'll get hurt. Beckham facing Lewis. Ramirez takes off. Here's the throw to second. Ramirez is safe. Alexi's been running much more on this road trip, and he decides to take off on the first pitch. So Alexi swiping his seventh bag of the year. He's been caught twice. Gets off to a good jump. Now this of course is not just a stolen base. It was to make sure that Chirinos is okay after getting hit in the throwing wrist. You want to make sure that the catcher is okay. He made a decent throw just couldn't get it down there in time. Excellent point. Beckham lifts a lazy fly ball. To short right camped under it is Alberto and he makes the catch and the inning is over. We go to the bottom of the second at the moment. Rangers with a four nothing lead.
game brought to you by Miller Light. Chuck Swirsky alongside my main man, the former Cy Young Award winner of the Baltimore Orioles, Steve Stone. Steve pitched across the street, which is now a parking lot here in Arlington. And what you have to realize, as long as you do baseball, Chuck, it's never a good omen if the leadoff hitter is leading off <laughs> twice in two innings. That is true. That is true. Rangers got four in the first. The Shields bunts, and it's a good one. Samarja fires to first, not in time, and the Shields on with a base hit. We told you the first time up, he is one of the three bunters on this team. The Shields, Martin, and Andrus with the Shields and Martin bunting more. And he'll do it either to third or to first. He deadens the ball perfectly and then with the great speed able to beat the play at first base. So Jeff Samarja, who's now given up 16 first inning runs in this, his 11th start of the year. Now he's got a speed burner at first. Who's stolen 12 of 13 bases. Let's see what develops here. With the shields on at first. Bring up Chu. He fly to left in the first. It's not a bad idea. To use a pitch out on the first pitch. The shields is getting an enormous lead at first. Samarjo with a check of the rudder. Inside on Chu. When Chu had some great years with the Cleveland Indians and he hit over 300 drove in 90 runs he was hitting in the third and fourth spot. Then they decided to hit him up higher in the lineup because the power really started to go down. Last year a bad year for him he had an ankle problem. And last year the first year of that contract that Chuck told you about. Was a very disappointing year for him, and the Rangers were very disappointed, but he had an injury plagued season. This could be too the flip. Ramirez over to first. Did LaRoach stick it out? Yes, he did. A 4 6 3 twin kill. That's one of the things you love to see, and that is with one of the better base stealers around, you don't run with him, and then you turn it into two. No chance at all as Alexi comes across. The Shields goes in hard at second base, but can't get a piece of him on the pivot. And it's a double play. We'll bring on uh, Prince Fielder, who singled to right in the first inning. Fielder, as we mentioned, leading the American League in batting at 359. He's number one in the AL in hits with 75, tenth in the league in doubles, third in the league in RBIs, third in the league in on base percentage. Sixth in the league in slugging. Other than that, Steve, he's a slacker. And what he was doing when the season started, because of the shift that everybody put on him, he was just poking the ball into left field. They would shift, he'd get a base hit to left. They would shift again, he'd get a base hit to left. They eventually got so tired of him getting a base hit to left, they started to come in, and that's when he started to hit the ball out of the park. And on top of that, Steve, he's been going to Pilates classes, he's working on MMA. Kind of like me, you like my physique. I mean, like getting there, like you, you guys are very, very similar. I, I would think so. Yes, you both have two arms, <laughs> although his one arm is the size of your two arms, but you have two arms. <laughs> so uh, fielder, what they count one ball and two strikes. Prince is a large fellow. Yes. And when they made the deal, sending Ian Kinsler to Detroit, they also. Set along 30 million dollars. Yeah, he's in the fourth year of a nine year, 214 million dollar deal. Steve, he's making 24 million this year. He's making 24 million as far as the eye can see. A ball in two strikes. Here's Samarja again with the delivery. The highest paid player in Major League Baseball is not Fielder, it's Clayton Kershaw of the Dodgers. They reported 31 million this season. A ball and two strikes with two outs. Texas with four in the first. They have a four nothing lead over the White Sox. With the shift on. And it goes out of play to the right. And we told you if you hit a pop up that way it's going to go into the seats and fielder. 
who had neck surgery and what they did was they fused a couple of the bones together. Now many times when that happens you lose certainly some mobility some flexibility. It really hasn't happened to Prince. So apparently Pilates have worked very well with him because he's seen no ill effects from that surgery at all. One and two. Ground ball again with this shift and the throw to first and they got him. So we'll go to the third. White Sox have some business to take care of. Trailing four nothing here in Arlington. We're in Arlington, Texas for the first of three with White Sox and the Rangers. The former Ranger Gio Soto will approach the plate against Colby Lewis. One of the things you really can't be looking for is a walk as Lewis is last couple of weeks gotten everything over the plate. It's somewhat surprising but he's walked at just one of the last 57 men that he's faced. Kobe Lewis just reading his bio Steve he missed 21 months with elbow and hip surgeries during that 2013 14 campaign. Began his career with the Rangers bounced around with Detroit and Oakland resurfaced with Texas in 2010. Well, losing Hugh Darvish was just a tremendous blow to this team. They lost Holland. They lost Harrison. But once again, injuries have plagued the ball club. But right now, they're starting to come together. When healthy, how good is Darvish? Darvish, when healthy, is one of the best pitchers around. I mean, he had some remarkable runs. His stuff is is just great. He's got pinpoint control. Throws the ball 96, 97 miles an hour. And he was the number one pitcher. You lose the number one pitcher on your staff, it's really tough to make up for. It. And they've mixed and matched in that starting rotation. Nick Martinez has left the bullpen now as a starter and done a nice job. 2 2 pitch. That's a base hit for Soto. The White Sox have a run around here in the third. One of the things about this infield that people don't realize, and that's why you have to take ground balls early. And you want to take them a little bit later as they water it down. This is one of the fastest infields in all of baseball. Now they've said that they've slowed it down somewhat, tried to make it softer, but this at times is actually like playing infield on a parking lot. If you don't get any kind of break on it, the ball is going through. Sanchez, the number nine hitter at the plate with Soto on. 
I spoke to uh, Gordon Beckham prior to the ball game about just that. He said, you know, Chuck, historically they've had fast infields here in Arlington. We've seen a little of this, a little of that during this road trip with the slow infield in Toronto. Here's the little pitch. Well, Toronto with the new artificial surface was awfully slow. Then you go to Baltimore, and that's that's a fair infield, not overly fast, not overly slow. Two of the count to Sanchez. Two for four with an RBI on Sunday. Easy fly ball to center field for Martin. So the returns to first year, Steve. How they always have this day in baseball. So I got a quick story for you. Sure. 90 years ago today, and no, I was not there. 90 years ago today, Wally Pip walks into the Yankee uh, locker room and he tells the trainer, you know, I'm not feeling well. I got a headache. Do you have a couple of aspirins? Miller Huggins, the manager of the Yankees, overhears that conversation. He says, okay, hey, Garrett, grab a mitt. Go to first. Well, there was there was a choice. See, that's part of the story you don't know. There was a choice between Hawk and Lou Garrett, <laughs> and they picked Lou. Hawk, if you're uh, watching our ball game, and I know you are, we miss you. But that started the streak yeah. for Lou Gehrig, all because of a headache. And Wally Pip, well, he didn't go on to do a whole lot. Here, here's something I, I learned today, Steve, among many things that uh, I've been, you know, absorbing over the past eight, nine days working with you. With Adam Eaton at the plate, Wally Pip was born in Chicago. I did not know that. No right. And on this date, speaking of Yankees, in 1935, Babe Ruth announced his retirement. One ball and a strike hit and out here. In the top of the third, the White Sox with a runner on. Eaton chops it foul. Well, eventually, and I'm not sure when they're going to get around to it, but you get a 6'5", 240-pound third baseman who was in his first major league game. You would think they would try to bunt on Joey Gallo. Mm-hmm. Just test his mechanics as far as charging on a bunt. And that one went right off of Torino's. Well, he's had already a tough ball game to say the least. Got hit by a pitch in the first. Right off the bat, and that got him on the throwing hand again. Mm -hmm. Yikes. See, I don't know how much the average catcher makes in the big league, Steve, but it's not enough. Tough business. He's got his fingernails painted. A vivid orange. Do so you think this Texas team went healthy when they get their pitchers back? Have a legit shot at this? I think they have as good a shot as anybody. I'm kind of surprised that Seattle is where they are at 24 and 27. I think the Angels will get better. They're starting to get better now. They've won five games in a row and they're sitting four games in back of Houston. They'll certainly be a factor. I think the West is pretty much up for grabs. You see the Astros and they're a good team. I don't think they're a great team by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I think that they would tell you if Jeff Luno would be honest about it that they might be a year ahead of schedule. But right now they're playing good. Good solid baseball. We saw them took two of three in that series but. They've got some very good young players some very good young players coming up. And I think it depends. Because right now you can shut them down offensively. I think it depends on Carlos Correa when he comes up to play shortstop. What they decide to do with the rest of that infield around him. I think he's going to be a huge factor for that offense. Two balls, two strikes, and an out here to Adam Eaton. Soto at first. So last night I'm watching the MLB package, watching a lot of ball games, and there's so many gifted young players in this league. Garrett Cole of Pittsburgh, I saw him last night. You know, Steve, he was dominating. I mean, he really did a magnificent job, and he could start 
for the National League for the All-Star game if he keeps up this pace. He would be the first pirate to start an All-Star game since 1975, and I did not know this until I looked it up. Jerry Royce was the last pirate to start an All-Star game. Eden Sweets at deep right field, and this baby is gone! A two-run shot for Adam Eaton. I talked with Adam after he hit the home run in Baltimore. And I said at the time that the wind was blowing that way and took it out. And he told me I got most of that. Well, the wind didn't take this one out on our Ford home run replay. Adam crushed this ball. That's his third home run of the year. He's now driven in eight. Makes this game a lot more interesting. It's now a four to two game. And that was a blast. You're right. I'll tell you what that ball does carry well to right. But that was well hit. All you have to do is get it up in the air. They estimated at 391 feet, but Adam would gladly tell you that it was at least 420. That was in the upper deck. A no doubter. Melky Cabrera at the plate. Cabrera flied out to center in the first. Lewis, the pitch, slice foul to the right. Back in 2013, Adam Eaton set a career high in home runs with three. So apparently, this is the lively ball era because it's early in the season. He's already tied his career high. Chop to first. Moreland plays a great bag at first. That's it. He has a terrific run. And there's a look at Adam, who cut the lead in half. Colby Lewis lifetime, five and three against our Sox with an ERA of 440. So historically, Sox have scored against it. And this is early enough where you figure there's going to be a lot, a lot more scoring to be had in this game before it's over. And left-handers this year have absolutely killed Colby Lewis. LaRoche on the season, six homers, 22 RBIs. 4 2 Texas. Rangers got four in the first. Eaton has responded here with a two run blast to right. You know, the White Sox, I'm, I'm a half glass that's full. You know, some people look at a glass and say, okay, is it half full, half empty? You know what, Steve? The White Sox did win 15 games in the month of May. Here's a drive to center field, well hit. Martin racing over near the track and hauls it in. But I want to talk about the month of May and your assessment of the White Sox. And we'll be back in a moment right here on Comcast Sportsnet.
David Haw every morning for the latest sports news and opinion on the Cap and Haw Show. It's Chicago's only morning sports talk show on television weekdays at 9 on Comcast Sportsnet. And I'm sure that Cap and Haw are going to be talking about the new head coach of the Chicago Bulls on behalf of all of us with the White Sox family. We welcome Fred Hoiberg into the Bulls organization as he returns as a head coach. Former player, of course, with the Bulls in a really class act. Mitch Moreland at the plate stepping in against Samarja. Takes a call. So, Steve, here we have Jeff Bannister in his first season as a major league manager, was a coach under Clint Hurdle with Pittsburgh. We'll pick up in a moment after Samarja's delivery here to uh, Moreland. And so, as a manager, let, let's talk about coaches for a moment. How many coaches directly report to a manager and does a manager have input on who he wants or is that a GM decision? All the coaches report to the manager. There is no doubt about that. And he got him as Moreland expanded that strike zone. But it depends on how much juice you have as a manager, Chuck, as to how many coaches you're allowed to have. In this situation here, this is the first time that Bannister has ever been a manager. He was a bench coach with Clint Hurdle and a good one. But coming in here for the first time, you're not usually going to be allowed to be able to pick your own coaching staff. You might get one. Sometimes you get two. In this case, he inherited most of the staff. He's got a, a terrific pitching coach in Mike Maddox. Dave Magadan was here already in the third year of a three year contract. So most of these guys were holdovers. Where if you go out and let's say. Just for instance. You decide that. Um, well in the case of you talked about some great managers here. Whitey Herzog and Billy Martin. You bring them into an organization. They're going to have their own guys that they're going to bring in. And the better the manager. The more guys they have had during the course of their managerial career and they're going to be allowed to fill up the coaching staff with guys that they can trust and they really enjoy they enjoy having them around. They think they're very good. But early in your career more times than not if you get one you're doing well more times than not you come in and you're going to inherit most of the staff and that's not a bad thing because I've always been in favor of the best man for the job. The best man for the job should be a coach. It could very well be that the best man for the job is already in that job. And so to come in and clean house without observing what you have is not a great thing. After a year, well, you want to make some changes and make some changes. 3 2 count coming up with one out. So you really want to surround yourself with the best people available. There's got to be a comfort zone, obviously, as well. And they have one of the best around in Mike Maddox as far as a pitching coach is concerned. They spent a great deal of money to bring him over from Milwaukee. Andrews going the other way. Nice stab by the fan there. That's what happens when you bring your glove to the ballpark. <laughs> Occasionally you get a slicing line drive and you make the catch. And he spilled nary an ounce of his beverage. See, that's the key right there. That's one of the big keys. Andrews walks. We touched on this during the Baltimore series, and I think Steve Stone, it, it merits maybe to um, you know, ask again. You mentioned Maddox, the pitching coach, who's highly regarded in this sport. And when you were in Baltimore, Ray Miller was your pitching yes. coach. So what makes a great pitching coach? I mean, because there's so many guys that have different mindsets. Well, first of all, one of the things, Chuck, is you very rarely will find a star pitcher making a great pitching coach. Joey Gallo just recall got a two run single in his first major league at bat. Mike Maddox was a decent pitcher, not a good one. Makes a great pitching coach. Don Cooper. Not a particularly good pitcher makes an excellent pitching coach. But some of the great pitchers around it's very difficult for them to relate to the average major league pitcher because what they did automatically they have to teach. There's a well hit ball right field and that is a home run upper deck and Joey Gallo what a major league debut my goodness two for two he just jacked a two run shot here in Arlington. 
He's driven in four runs and two at bats. And Joey Gallo showed you just exactly why Chris Bryant and Joey Gallo last year were one two in the entire minor leagues in home runs. That ball right down the middle our Ford home run replay a Titanic shot up into the upper deck. He's and, getting a standing ovation here and justifiably so as that was a rocket. Wally Pips on line one. There are the gallows and they have to be absolutely apoplectic. We're going to have a pinch hitter. Corporate is uh, pinch hitting for Sharinas. Apparently, getting hit twice off his throwing hand is taking Chirinos out of the game. So Carlos Corcoran comes on a pinch hit, and he'll stay in behind the plate. It's six to two, Texas. Big swing into this by Corcoran. Joe Yellow, you know, with all the hype, and we've heard a lot since. Uh, Beltre got hurt on Sunday with a thumb diving into second base on a steal attempt. The Gallo was recalled, and it's been 24 7 here in Arlington. Eaton backs up about five steps, makes the catch. Well, Gallo was in double A, and the interesting thing about it is that it's already been said, regardless of what he does. And you can hardly get any better than what he's done in two at bats. But regardless of what he does, as soon as Adrian Beltre is ready to come back, Joey Gallo is going back down to the minor leagues. That could get a little tougher if this continues. As you mentioned, Steve, he's 6'5, right now 240. They list him at 240. He's a big man. He is 6'5, 240. That Vegas area, Chris Bryan is from Vegas. And in the winter time, he works out with Jason Giambi. It's a base hit to right. You've got uh, Bryce Harper. He's from Vegas, and uh, I believe Greg Maddox was from Valley High in Vegas. If I'm not mistaken. So they turned out some wonderful players. There's a look at Adrian Beltre. They want him to do a whole lot of talking with. Joey Gallo about how to play third base. But doesn't have to talk too much about hitting. Can't do better than driving in four two for two with a home run in your first two major league at bats. Andrew Alberto at the plate. It all ties together. See I, I shared that Wally Pip story. Lou Gehrig Joey Gallo. Yeah but Adrian Beltre is yes, not going can. anywhere. Obviously I'm. <laughs> a little playful there. But the Rangers have put six runs on the board. We're still in the bottom of the third. Their offense has really come to life. They averaged five runs per game the month of May. A one pitch. There is something about the weather. I mean, when it starts turning the corner and you get that weather in June, July, especially here in Texas, where it's hot. Steve, you pitched here, you know all about it. Yeah, it's always been, always been a very difficult place for pitchers. One of the reasons why it is so difficult to get a lot of free agent pitchers to come to Texas. There's a ground ball to Beckham. Double clutch throws to first, and the inning is over. But Gallo is the story of this ball game, folks. Two run over. He has four of the eyes. Six two Texas after three.
and that features savings of individual game tickets. Pick 14 plans start as low as $110. So for tickets or more information, visit WhiteSox.com or call 312-674-1000. Always a pleasure. Chuck Swirsky along with Steve Stone. We are going to go to Twitter. You can tweet us at Swirsk054. That's S-W-I-R-S-K-054. My Twitter handle is a ground ball deep in short. Let's see if the Rangers can make the play. And they got him. Boy, the Los Angeles went deep in the hole. That gives you an idea of the talent of Andrus in the field. He came over in the mark to share a deal. And what a play that was. Good scoop by Moreland on the other end. Deep in the hole. He has to leave his feet. A strong enough arm to get it mostly all the way across the diamond. And they got him out at first base. We'll bring on Connor Gillespie for the White Sox who trails six to two here in the top of the fourth inning. Colby Lewis on the mound. All right, Stephen, let's uh, go to some questions. Uh, who do you think the best catcher has been in Major League Baseball over the past 10 years? Wow. Well, that covers a lot of ground. Yes, it does. And it doesn't matter who I answer, but someone else will have somebody somebody that they like more. I would say when you're an MVP as as Buster Posey was mm -hmm. that would be uh, one of the guys that you like. I think for leadership Yadier Molina from St. Louis is one of those guys that you love. The looper to center field it's going to fall in for a base hit for Connor Gillespie. Alberto with a big effort out almost in left center field and the best thing that happened to him was that he was able to get down and avoid a collision with Leonis Martin. Martin gets caught in the knee. He could have been in big trouble also. Also have a few questions regarding Jeff Samarja in the first inning his troubles. So I would say Yadier, Yadier Molina for his leadership. He was a great leader before he became a good clutch hitter late in ball games. And Buster Posey for the overall aspect of his game. Be hard pressed to pick a couple of better guys than that. Of course, I know I'm missing a few out there, but those two guys are right up there. Ramirez came through with a base hit to left in the second, then he also stole second. Here in Texas. Rangers with four in the first, two more in the third. They lead six to two. The major league debut of 21 year old Joey Gallo playing third base came through with a two run single in his first major league at bat in the first, then clipped a two run shot in the third. Ramirez going the other way. Two with routine catch. Beckham who popped his second in the second. Gordon playing some great ball for the White Sox. Sox won 15 games in the month of May and over the past week Beckham is hitting 308. Also playing just a spectacular third base. And he was brought in. You have to applaud Rick Hahn for bringing him in as a utility guy. He wasn't going to win the job at second base, the place where he starred with the Sox before. But as a utility man, he's been brilliant, and now he's playing a whole lot of third base and doing a great job of it. Beckham going the other way, and he drops a base hit in the right. The White Sox have runners at first and second here in the top of the fourth. Gordon got a fastball. It's the Honda pitch tracks and it's on the outer third. He took it to right field. Chu used to have a great arm. Now he has a good arm. The guy who's got a great arm is Leonis Martin in center field. He is the last guy you want to test. Robin Ventura very very high on the athleticism of the Texas Rangers. 
6 2 Texas. Two outs. Soto at the plate. He singled up the middle in the third. This one is still early enough, and this ballpark is lively enough where no lead is safe. We've seen some very big leads disappear in a hurry. All you got to do is get one up in the jet stream. Now, it's a legitimate home run if you hit it to left field over that scoreboard. But for the left hand hitters, you take it down that line in left, in right rather, and it goes out of the park right center field. It's only 377 of the power alleys. It'll go out easily. Narrowly missed. One and two on Soto. Rick Hahn, by the way, the general manager of the White Sox, is here in Arlington catching this ball game tonight, getting ready for the draft. Pretty exciting time for all organizations at this point, that draft coming up. Soto swings and misses. He's struck him out, and the inning is over. 6 2 Rangers. We go to the bottom of the fourth for the movement right here on Comcast Sportsnet. in Michigan City, Indiana. For the Rangers, 6 8 and no. For the White Sox, 2 5 0. Chuck Swirsky filling in for Ken Harrelson. And the Hawk will be back very soon. Steve, of course, has had an opportunity to see every major league ball club in the American National League. And we are tapping into his fountain of resources here to learn more about these players in the great game of baseball as DeShield steps in against Samarja. He had a bunt hit leading off the second inning and for the third time in four innings Delano DeShields leads it off. Is he similar to his father as far as just uh, as far as his skill set Steve. He's very athletic. He's very fast. Probably as good a base stealer but pretty much I think that's where it ends. Delano was. Delano was a great basketball player. His father as well as a baseball player. Quality second baseman. I mean. If you're good enough to get traded for Pedro Martinez and nobody knew that Pedro with the Dodgers would be the Pedro that emerged later on. But when you're good enough as he goes down on strikes you got to figure you have a whole lot of talent. So I think that his father was a bit more talent. It's three on uh, two and he is batting second in the order and discuss the, the, the number two hitter in a lineup for a moment. What are some of the challenges that player faces? Number two hitter has more responsibility than anybody in the lineup. Anybody? Yes. And the reason being, if you're hitting two behind a base stealer, you have to learn how to hit down in the count. You have to learn how to take pitches and allow that base stealer a chance to steal bases. If you can't hit with two strikes and if you can't hit down in the count, you're not going to be a good two hitter. Also, if you're a right hand hitter, you got to learn to hit the ball to the right side because on a hit and run you want to hit it. Usually through the vacated right side with a left hand hitter 
you want to learn how to pull the ball if you don't already know it. If you can't do that, you can't be a good two hitter. So fly ball to left. In the corner out of play. It really helps if you can make contact because if your manager knows that he can use the hit and run where you're not going to swing and miss, you're very valuable as a number two hitter. But the number two hitter in a lot of offenses, if a guy leads off with a double, they ask him to butt him over to third, get him to third base with less than two outs. That's important. But just having the confidence to hit down in the count, Chuck, a lot of guys can't do that. A lot of guys panic when they get two strikes on them. Here's the pitch swung on. And there's a deep fly ball to right center field. And that's another home run for the Texas Rangers. That's the eighth home run of the year for Shinsu Chu. He's driven in 24. And the left handers tonight are torching Jeff Samarja. Ford home run replay. It's a high fastball. And Chu, who used to hit in the neighborhood of anywhere from 20 to 23 or four home runs a year, probably on pace to do the same thing this year. Let's see, fires over to LaRoche. Samarja, eight of his nine homers, he's allowed to come on the road. Well, you, you talked, Steve, about, you know, Prince Fielder went to his manager, Jeff Bannister, said, like, listen, you know what, Moreland is a better fielder than I am, so put him at first, I'll DH. Does the slot second in the uh, lineup, does he almost have to have a selfless attitude? I think he just has to be an accomplished hitter. I mean, you can hit two, or you can be a quality second hitter, and they're not one and the same. A lot of guys hit two. But not a lot of guys can handle the responsibility of a two hole hitter. Is there any number two hitter in the lineup that you recall either playing with or played against it? You could say to yourself now as you reflect that that guy was a great number two hitter. Let me think. Because you're right, the leadoff man always gets the props. Well, what's happening now, Chuck, is that, you know, for a long time we played slug ball, and that was the era of performance enhancing drugs where the intricacies of the small ball was just out of the equation. And now we're seeing that more and more these days. So Jeff gets out of the inning, but not before Chu hits a home run. And it's 7 to 2 as we head to the top of the fifth inning.
Welcome back to Arlington Texas in the first of three and thus far it's been all Rangers folks. Seven to two they have collected nine hits. Uh, Jeff Samarja Colby Lewis meantime has surrendered a couple of runs on five hits. Going to go to the Twitter page at the moment for Steve Stone Sanchez at the plate. Here's a question from Anthony Kaczynski and they want to know Steve whether or not you ever face Hawk Harrelson in a major league game. I don't think that I did. I think Hawk was probably close to wrapping up his career. You know he retired at the age of 29. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of surprising because he had a couple of great years and then he broke his ankle. And just decided that. He didn't want to play baseball anymore. He wanted to try playing golf professionally and was good enough to make that attempt. Sanchez and a diving snag. Did he trap it or catch it? We're waiting and he caught it. Nice play. My goodness to Shields. We had to wait to see whether or not the umpire's ruling on that. Well, speed helps out regardless of where you are. Certainly, you can see it offensively. It's pretty easy to see, but it helps defensively as that was a line drive slicing away from the shields. He was able to flat out dive and take it right off the grass. And just a great catch. It's amazing what happens when you have speed. It can bail you out so many times. Good jump on this and then the ball sticks in the glove. It does not hit the grass. And a fine play. It's going to bring out Adam Eaton Eaton with a two run shot in the third. His second homer on this trip he had a solo blast against Baltimore in that twin bill. The answer to the Hawk question. Is that it would be impossible to face him because I was in the National League. With the Giants in 71 and Hawks last year was in the American League in 71. He was involved in a trade with Boston and Cleveland and I believe correct me if I'm wrong originally did not want to report. But eventually did. Yes. Big swing into the spot Eaton that he struck him out. Cabrera flied out to center and then grounded the first in the third. X rays on Robinson Chirinos are negative. He left with a bruised right hand. And not only did he take a fastball off the right hand from Jeff Samarja, but then he got a, a foul ball off the same area and had to leave the game. So the best part of that occurrence for the Rangers is that the x-rays were negative and he'll be listed as day to day. One one count with two outs. White Sox fans celebrate Italian Heritage Night presented by Beggars Pizza when we take on the Detroit Tigers on Friday June 5th. Italian Heritage Night will feature specially priced tickets and a post game fireworks show. To purchase tickets, visit whitesox.com slash Italy. Lewis winds and delivers. It's a fly ball to right. Moving in a couple of steps, he's two and he makes the catch. And just like that, that's a quick fifth. 72 Rangers right here on Comcast Sportsnet.
of the phenom Joey Gallo. Elvis Andrews steps to the plate and a fine defensive play in deep short and Andrews offensively an infield hit in the first and he walked in the third. Andrews this year is struggling against right handed pitchers. And it's kind of unusual he's hitting just 195 against right handers and yet. He swung and missed. Just a little over 12 percent of the time. That's among the league's best so he's making contact just not good contact. White Sox started the ball game seven out behind Minnesota and right now Boston in the ninth with a one nothing lead over the twins. Detroit really struggling. They had swept by the Angels over the weekend in Anaheim losing five three to Oakland in the seventh. And we're going to see the Tigers in Chicago over the weekend. So hope to see a lot of family in Chicago come out to the ballpark and enjoy some great baseball. Detroit had a three to nothing lead in that game against Oakland only. To see it go by the boards and now trailing five to three that game in the bottom of the seventh inning. One ball two strikes here is Samarja. Sanchez with a backhand uh, LaRoche. Nice play by Carlos. Just like we promised you earlier in the game it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light and here's our Miller moments. That one the first time up getting by LaRoche it drives in two that's his first major league at bat this is second. It's a towering home run. He's driven in four runs in his two bats. He's two for two. And Joey Gallo at 21 years old is having quite a night in front of his folks and friends. Nothing personal. We've seen enough of Joey Gallo. How about his first major league strikeout? <laughs> well, seeing as he strikes out a third of the time in the minor leagues, this is the third time up. A franchise record for his major league debut with four driven in. That's good. But you mentioned this the other day. You can deal with the strikeouts if you have a big home run bopper in the lineup. It doesn't really matter very much what the batting average says. It's just how many do you drive in? How many do you score? And that one slipped out of Jeff's hand. So for Gallo, you could hardly be any better. He's been up twice. He's driven in four and scored twice. See, that was me in CYO ball when I was pitching on the mound, just all over the place. There's a well hit ball by Gallo. And you have a double. Let's see if Gallo, we got to play at second, and he is safe. That ball narrowly missed going out of the ballpark. He hit the wall, and then he hustled in the second dive. It in. Steve, so he's three for three. We're in the fifth inning, and he's a triple shy of the cycle. And this is Major League debut. They're going to be talking about this Major League debut for a long time here in Arlington, Texas, as this ball right off the wall. And you know the great thing about this from a promotional standpoint? This is Globe Life Park. What a sense of promotion as he hits it off the Globe Life side. <laughs> So it helps if you can do that as yes. well as going three for three. Well, tonight he's played like he's on a different planet. No pun intended. He is three for three in his major league debut. He's going to take the Cowboys off the front page if he keeps playing like this. Been a pretty amazing night for Joey Gallo. I don't think he's going to have to buy a meal for a long time. It's only sent to Frisco. And he will be sent to Frisco, although it can't be this good. But yeah. if it's even close to like this, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to send him down. The Rangers have 10 hits, Steve Stone, and Gallo has three. You know, one of his coaches growing up, the father of Chris Bryant. You're kidding. He's very good friends with Chris Bryant. They were linked together with their prolific power in the minor leagues. Bryant is older, more developed, more polished as a hitter. But as you can see, Joey Gallo at 21, the sky is the limit for his talent. 
One ball, two strikes at an out. Swing out of us by Corcoran. And he goes down as Marja punches him out. Bryant attended Bonanza High School in Vegas. And Joe Gallo went to Bishop Gorman. Notably, Bishop Gorman is a feeder school for NCAA Division I basketball talent in the Vegas area. They've turned out C.J. Watson, a former Chicago Bull. Tristan Thompson of the Cavaliers is in the NBA Finals. He's from Bishop Gorman. But Gallo, very impressive. Three for three in his big league debut. And for those of you who don't know who Chris Bryant is, he is the emerging star with the Chicago Cubs, who was brought up after this year started and is already driven in over 30 runs. And he led the minor leagues last year with 43 home runs. Gallo was second with 42. The thing about Gallo is this. The last two years, he hit 40 or more home runs. The last minor leaguer to do that, Ron Kittle, back in 1981 and 82. It's been a long time since somebody went back to back 40s in the minor leagues. There, the minor league numbers for three years 22, of course, he was just a baby then, 40 and 42. It's pretty amazing when you play 140 games, you hit 42 home runs and drive in 106. That's pretty stout. Sharply hit. Sanchez, the toss to first, and the inning is over. But Joey Gallo, wow. What a ball game is major league debut, 72 ages. Six fifteen. as our White Sox take on the Tigers. The first 5,000 kids ages 13 and under will receive a White Sox Kids XL hoodie presented by Aquafina. Purchase your tickets today by visiting WhiteSox.com slash promos. Chuck Swirsky with the great Steve Stone. We're in Arlington, <laughs> Texas. Red Sox cooled off its wins tonight at Fenway. They three hit Minnesota in a one nothing win. The Roche going the other way near the track. Now on the track, and it carried and hauled in by the Shields. That was a blast to the opposite field because to get it out of here, especially a left hander hitting at the left field, you've got to get just about every bit of it. And he was able to get most of it, not quite all of it. It's going to bring on Garcia. Unassisted to first in the second, grounded out to short in the fourth. White Sox trailing 7 to 2, 7 10 and 0 for Texas. Two runs, five hits, no errors for the White Sox. Again, the draft is coming up shortly. Rick Hahn here in Arlington addressed the uh, draft. Looking forward to the White Sox adding on. 
They've got the eighth pick overall. Big swing by Garcia. Texas with the fourth pick in the draft. And everybody now is sitting there. They brought in all their people from all over the country as well as everybody associated with their minor league system. And they're getting as much input as they possibly can looking at all of the reports making their draft board and exactly how they rank the players to see who's going to be there when it's their turn to pick. If you're drafting four you only have to look at a few guys because you got a pretty good idea who it's going to be. With this year it's a deep draft however there isn't that bona fide number one guy. A little lazy ground roll with a skip and a hop and a throw to Elvis Andrus for the out. And so what they say this year is that it's pretty rich in middle infielders meaning shortstops and second basemen. It's pretty thin in corner infielders meaning yes, third baseman and first baseman. There's a couple of guys but they're not expected to go awfully high. And then of course you have pitchers and you've got a lot of them with a lot of guys filling in pretty close to one another and the most difficult pick are the high school pitchers. College pitchers there's a lot of guys that will be available when the Sox pick at eight. We have two outs here in the top of the sixth. I was doing some reading today about the uh, draft and they said it's very thin at the catching position. It's always thin. If you can find catchers. That's the ideal pick. You would like to have a catcher preferably hits left handed but these days you'll take a catcher who can hit from either side of the plate. You would like him to be a leader if you could get that. You would certainly like him to be pretty good defensively but that is probably the thinnest position around the major league. So hard to find. Just incredible every team would love one. Lesby shoots it foul to the left. Connor unassisted to first in the second with a bloop single to center. But I will tell you the phrase that probably every team and their scouting director is going to use probably from the 10th pick on down for the first round. What's that? I can see it now. We are absolutely surprised that this guy was there when it was our turn because he was really high on our board. But you should mention everyone that. will say that. But but you know in the case and tomorrow started for the White Sox Chris Sale they the Sox were shocked <laughs> that he was available. He was picked at 13 and you're right because there was a, a hitter by the name of Sale they thought would be there. They never in their wildest dreams thought that our Chris Sale then the pitching Chris Sale would be there and they were indeed shocked when he was there. But Chris was equally as tall as he is now six six he was even thinner than he is now and a lot of people passed him up simply because they didn't think he was durable enough. Well he's proven to be that and more. Colby Lewis on the mound. Speaking of which uh, Rick Hahn was talking about that draft with Chris Sale Steve and he said there were cameras in the draft room apparently they were MLB was doing some you know documentary or a show. And so they had to be very reserved when they found out that Chris Sale was drafted <laughs> because inside they were, were euphoric. Well, you're waiting there, especially if you've got a guy that you really love and you're clicking down each spot. But especially when you get to 12, the last thing you would want to see there is the team ahead of the Sox, whoever that team was, picking Chris Sale. Because then you've got to go to plan B or C, depending. Jeff Bannister, the new manager of the Rangers, was raving about sale prior to the ball game. Because someone said, Are you going to put Gallo in the lineup against a lefty tomorrow? And he said, Listen, let, let's get this kid through his first Major League <laughs> Baseball game before we start talking about sale. He said, Sale is tough no matter who's in the lineup. But Joey Gallo, what a performance. If you just joined us on Comcast Sportsnet, Joey Gallo making his major league debut. He's a third baseman, 6'5, 240. He's gone three for three, including a two run shot. Cold strike three. Connor Gillespie doesn't like that call, but we go to the bottom of the six, seven to two Rangers.
Sportsnet Central, a road to a dynasty live from the Stanley Cup final presented by Coors Light. CSN Chicago's own Luke Stuckmeyers will have the uh, latest on the Blackhawks and Lightning every night all season long. We had Rangers with a 7-2 lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Joey Gallo making his major league debut. He is a triple shy in his major league debut of hitting for the cycle. I would doubt if anybody's done that. I'm not sure how many people have done what Gallo has done to this point in their major league debut. But our Dave Ross is checking with Elias now to find out if anybody has ever hit for the cycle in his debut. Joe DiMaggio was three for six with a triple in his major league debut. Samarjo goes inside on Hanser Alberto, the second baseman for the Rangers. They've had four different starting second basemen here in Texas already this season. Joey Gallo putting together an impressive game. And uh, I'm sure the Texas faithful are going to come out and enjoy watching this young man play. The guy that Texas counted on to play second base was Rugned Odor. Mm -hmm. And he was an all everything type player in their minor leagues, but Odor came up. I'm talking with Dave Magadan, his hitting coach. He said he had a nose to toe strike zone, and eventually it just caught up with him. That's going to drop in for a base hit. He makes the big turn of first. June 17th is NIU night at U.S. Cellular Field. Purchase tickets using the NIU ticket code and receive a voucher for one of a kind White Sox NIU hats. Northern Illinois University, your future, our network. Purchase your tickets today by visiting whitesox.com slash NIU. It's going to bring on Delano DeShields, who flat out to Garcia in the first and a punt single in the second. Nobody out here, bottom of the sixth, seven to two Texas in the first of three. The irony of Odor is that they were going to bring him up and they were going to then platoon at third base. But Odor is doing very well in AAA. They didn't want to disrupt that progress. And so they decided rather than bring him up and disrupt his progress, they would bring up Joey Gallo. I would say for John Daniels, <laughs> that's worked out very well in this his first game. Yes. And Daniels has been feeling a lot of pressure here. Yeah. Swung on. Right through the Nick of uh, Ramirez. Wow. That's going to be six. Yeah, it is. We told you how fast and how hard this infield is. If you're not used to it, it's playing like the artificial surface. And once it hits that dirt, it's like playing in a parking lot. And that ball just scooted under the glove of Ramirez. Should have been two. It's not. And here comes Robin. So you'd assume with the bullpen up and going that that would be it at the 95 pitch mark for Jeff Samarja. So Dan Jennings was loosening up and that's going to be it for Jeff Samarja. Dan Jennings is going to come into the ball game. We'll step out and be back after these messages.
Your field and delicious food and beverage options for you to enjoy prior and during White Sox games. Purchase the First Merit Bank Stadium Club membership by calling 312 674 1000. They're going to give it to Shields a base hit on that ground ball. Our Honda call to the pen is Dan Jennings. And Jennings comes into this one on for the 21st time. He's 1 1, the ERA up over 7. There you look at the numbers. Left hander's hitting 300, which is not a good number for a left hander. But you're right, Chuck. They are giving the Shields a base hit. Steve Weller is the official scorer. I talked with him before the game. He is from Arlington Heights, a lifetime White Sox fan, and apparently he wants to score more games for these Rangers because <laughs> Christmas comes early for Delano De Shields. Yes, it does. Thank you. Cold strike. So the Rangers with the first two batters here in the sixth of the board. Alberto now on at second to Shields at first. Chu is one for three, batting 237, eight homers, 24 RBIs. Jennings with a check of the runner. Did he go around? Oh, and two. Chu hit one of the two home runs off Jeff Samarja as he goes five plus innings. Here's the pitch. That's going to go right up the middle for a base hit. Rangers add their eighth one of the night. And Texas with runners at first and third with nobody out. Two drives in his 25th run of the year. Takes it right back up the middle. Three straight hits. This slider stays up. Two. Hits it hard, and if you don't hit it at somebody in the infield, nobody is going to get it. So now we'll take some time out as they are going to clean off the outfield of someone who decided that they wanted to spend a little time out there. Well, the Rangers with 13 hits, the White Sox with five, and this is the major league debut of Joey Gallo. We have Fielder is going to uh, take his place at the uh, plate against Jennings. You know what I found out about uh, Jennings over the past few days, Steve, is that he is a huge basketball fan and he is a big fan of the mayor, Fred Hoyberg, the new coach of the Chicago Bulls. He has followed Hoyberg's career through Iowa State as an NBA player. And uh, one day we'd like to meet Fred Hoiberg. We're going to arrange that with the White Sox return to Chicago. I'll put a call in to John Paxson and Garth Foreman and Michael Reinsdorf and try to arrange that. Jennings really knows his hoops. Well, hopefully, Fred's around for a long time. Yes, and I'm and, sure he will be. And Dan Jennings is around for a long time also. They'll have a chance to run into one another. See Fielder single to right in the first, grounded to second in the second, and grounded to short in the fourth. Runners at first and third for Texas. They played it a run here in the sixth and lead eight to two. Prince started his career with Milwaukee, came up through their system, eventually wending his way to Detroit, where he spent a couple of years. For being traded here to Texas and last year played in under only 42 games before finally the weakness and the pain got too much and then had neck surgery and was lost for the year. Fielder is a five time all star. His career high in Homer's Steve came with the Brewers as you mentioned he was brought up in the Milwaukee system hit 50 homers in 2007. He has finished in the top five at MVP voting three times. And when he's healthy, folks, he is an elite player. He's a ground ball. Ramirez throws over to first. And the Rangers with another run. RBI number 39. Because of the shift, there was no way 
that they could get the out at second base. So Prince just making some contact. Turns it into another run. Rangers have won 10 out of their last 12. They won three straight. Won 19 games in the month of May after starting 8 and 16. Well, as we were going through this road trip, I was watching the Rangers knowing that it would end up here. And they were scoring more runs with bigger deficits against the teams they were playing than they had in quite some time. And the offense was heating up behind Prince Fielder. Runner at second for Texas for Mitch Moreland. And I mean, when you mention runs, Steve, you're right. They were scoring in bunches. They are second in the American League, folks, in runs scored now with 242 second to the Blue Jays. We saw Toronto in the first leg of the sojourn that began some eight days ago. Then they lost Adrian Beltre, and we thought, well, that's not a <laughs> bad thing for the Sox. Yeah. Because Beltre doesn't strike out very much. He is an exceptional fielder. However, we could not look into the future and see the debut of Joey Gallo. So I'm, I'm in my hotel room last night, and I get this uh, text from Steve Stone. This is a true story, folks. And he says, Chuck, study up on Joey Gallo. We're going to see him tomorrow night. <laughs> I said I'm already on it, but nonetheless, Steve, you had a premonition about this kid. Well, I knew we were going to see him, and I knew that he came with a lot of fanfare. But I don't think anybody could have guessed that it would be this kind of debut. More than walks, so the Rangers with runners down at first and second with one out here in the sixth inning. Andrews with an infield base hit in the first, walked in the third, grounded to second in the fifth. Also made a terrific defensive play deep in the hole at short. Sox four and four on the road trip. They've won nine out of their last 13 on the road. Jennings with a check of the runner. He dropped two or three at Toronto, then split with Baltimore, and then won two or three from Houston. With Dates going the distance in the series finale. Jose Abreu remains out with that swollen uh, right index finger, and Rick Hahn telling reporters prior to the ball game. Maybe, maybe not about tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see, but he's still listed day to day. Diagnosed with a swollen right finger. The offense could certainly use the big man back. Very I know so. he is anxious to get back, but I took a look at that finger and it doesn't look great, although it is going down somewhat from what it was. It's still uncomfortable for him, and he still can't play because the moment he can play, he's back in the lineup. 3-0 count on Elvis Andrus with one out here. And he walked him. So the bases are loaded for guess who, Steve Stone? And that's going to bring Don Cooper out as the Gallows. Wondering what lies in store in the fourth major league at bat for their son, Joey. The first three have been awfully good. They get a two run single to right. Then followed with a two run shot. And then he doubled the right center in the fifth. Who needs Tony Romo? In 1999, Mark Quinn. Who's that? Drove in four. Mark Quinn in 1999 with the Royals. Hit a home run. And got three hits. And Oops, four run ready. batted in. Here's the pitch.
He's having one of those nights that every kid dreams about. Think about when he was going to bed last night, how many emotions was running through him, getting the first opportunity at quote unquote the show. 1 0 pitch to Gallo. You hear the groans of the crowd. That ball was off the plate, but Dan Jennings will take it. As you see, the bases are loaded, no place to put Joey Gallo. Nine to two, Texas. Big swing out of us. So, what are you throwing here, Steve? Another slider low and away and strike him out. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Bases loaded for Texas with one out here. Gallo at the plate. The pitch. Swing into this. He struck him out. And he still gets a standing ovation. And justifiably so. It was yes. yet another slider and he expanded his zone. You got the Bluetooth going with Jennings, don't you? On the mound. <laughs> Slider. You're going to strike him out. He buried the breaking ball in the dirt. Got an anxious youngster to swing at it. Now you got to get by corporate. Yes. Flogged the center in the third, struck out in the fifth. He'll turn around and hit from the right side, which, by the way, is his best side. Yeah, he replaced Chirinos, who really got banged up around the play, got also hit by a pitch. Bases remain loaded for Texas here in the bottom of the sixth with two out. Corcoran at the plate, stepping in against Jennings in relief of Samarja. Cold strike. Sox baseball tomorrow in game two. Chris Sale on the bound against Nick Martinez. Nick Martinez off to a very good start after coming out of their bullpen. Martinez is four and one with an ERA just over two. Mm -hmm. One one pitch. And that's looped in the right field for a base hit. One run in, two runs in. Rangers are just adding to their run total here in the bottom of the sixth with runners at first and third now with two out. This one over the middle of the plate. And Corcoran turns around to hit from the right side. He's hitting close to 300 as a right hand hitter. Left handed, not near the same. And the hit parade continues. 11 to 2 Texas. They got four in the first, two in the third, one in the fourth, and now four here in the bottom of the sixth to blow this thing open. 11 to 2. Leonis Martin. This is the second time in six innings that they will have sent at least nine batters to the plate. Fly ball to right. Garcia with the catch. And the inning is over. But Texas with four more here. And they lead 11 to 2.
Arlington, Texas, and it's been all Rangers, Mr. Stone. It has indeed, and it's a night that belongs to Joey Gallo and his parents and all of his fans, but also his Ranger offense, which has been something special. And Colby Lewis is very happy that things have worked out as well as they have, and that he has Joey Gallo at third base. We're in the seventh for Alexei Ramirez. As you mentioned, uh, Lewis really struggled his last time out. He got shelled big time, but he looks terrific tonight. Here is Ramirez behind the bag. Nice play by Alberto, but he guns him down. That's just defensive positioning because he was in a perfect spot. Giving Alexi the entire right side. He took it right back up the middle and made a fine play on it. Alberto's pretty much of a defensive wizard. They don't expect him to hit very much, but they expect him to shore up their defense. That's something that Texas has had a hard time with in recent years. And I'm not sure, Chuck, if you ever appeared in the Catskills, but if you did, this is the kind of game where you break out the material. <laughs> well, Steve, I'll tell you what, I'm just trying to get through this. Believe me, you, you are terrific to work with. I mean, <laughs> here's the man, folks, that played with Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Juan Marichal, and I'm sitting next to him. He's probably saying, uh, uh, let's, <laughs> what am I doing sitting next to this guy? Go back to the NBA. Well, look. In those days, I was only six years old. I was one yeah, of the younger players in the league. So, uh, here, here's a question I've got for you. With uh, Beckham drilling one up the middle for a base hit. When, when you were a young player, I mean, we talked about Joey Gallo. Was sure, major sure, league yeah. Were you ever on the mound as a young player? Where you were on the mound and you're 60 feet, six inches away from a super duper star, and you said to yourself, "Oh my gosh." Like this is a guy that I was baseball card with when I was 11 years young. Yeah, it took Who, me to about my, my sixth year till <laughs> I got over that field. Who was the one guy that, like, when you saw the plate? I don't want to say intimidated, but you were awed. It's real interesting, and I'll, I'll tell you a story about the advice that I got. There was a great pitcher by the name of Mel Stottlemyre, a pitcher of the New York Yankees, and I played. Summer League ball with some guys that played in the Yankee system. They knew Mel Stottlemyre. When he came in to play the Indians, I got a chance to go out with him after the game. And I said to him, You know, I'm just 19 years old, and there are times when guys hit my curveball and all my stuff now. How in the world can I ever think about playing pro ball? And he said, Well, what's your best pitch? And I said, Actually, I throw pretty hard, but it's the curveball. So he said to me, remember something, the good curveball, nobody hits it when you're young. Nobody will hit it in high school, in college, nobody hits it in the pros, they don't hit it in the big leagues. That's the good curveball. And he said, you have to have respect for these guys, but you can't be in awe of anyone. And that was one of the things that I took forward. Is you respect everybody that's made the major leagues, but you can't be in awe of them because they're standing in the way of you and the job you have to do. Because as a pitcher, your job is to get them out. If you view them with too much respect, you can't do that. And it gets to the point, Chuck, where one day you feel like you belong. And when that day comes, when you feel like you belong, that's when you can start to excel. It took me a while to figure that out as I went five and nine, six and eight, and six and eleven in my first three years. I did not feel like I belonged at that point. Did you ever doubt yourself? You doubt yourself all the time. Every performer has a great deal of insecurity. Sanchez goes the other way to left field. And the catch beat by the Shields. That was a quick hitting here in the seventh. We'll return Chuck Skorsky, Steve Stone from Arlington.
and it was last night and it's Daniel Murphy of the New York Mets as they defeat the Padres seven to nothing. Murphy went four for five hit a home run a double drove in three and he scored three. So as you can see over the last 11 he's hitting 452. So he not only has changed last night's game but he's been getting the job done for the Mets as Hector Noesi comes in the ball game the third such pitcher of the night on for the eighth time he's 0 for his ERA up near six. And he's trying to find it out of the bullpen because in the heart of every pensman especially a long reliever beats the heart of a starter and he'd love to get back there. Hector began this uh, road trip Steve in Toronto on Monday gave up uh, five runs five hits in seven innings he settled down after a rocky start when the Blue Jays scored four in the first. Unless he winds and delivers, and that's a base hit to left field for Alberto. That's his second hit of the night. Join the White Sox wives and White Sox volunteer corps in celebrating Southpaw's birthday on Saturday, June 6. Bring toys. Southpaw is going to donate all the toys to the Ronald McDonald House Charities. Visit WhiteSox.com/spb day. You can get more information and specially priced game tickets. Rangers with a leadoff man on first for Delano De Shields. Ball is well hit and a running catch by the left fielder Cabrera. So I want to get back to the insecurities of a ball player. I think it's every performer, Chuck. I don't think it's just a baseball player, but it's especially especially guys who have come up. They might mask it with bravado. They might tell you how good they're going to do. In their heart of hearts, until you've really done it, you just don't feel like you belong. And I think it's the natural insecurity of any performer. Some guys do a better job of handling it. Some guys do a worse job. It's a base hit to right with Ronnie Roy. Alberto makes the big turn at second. He's going to stop at third. So the Rangers with runners at first and third with one out here in the bottom of the seventh. There's a tremendous amount of pressure in the major league. And that pressure comes from number one trying to get here. Once you get here it's trying to stay here. And knowing that there's a line of people behind you waiting to take your spot. You want to do it and prove it each and every day. So one of the greatest things I ever heard a manager say was look everybody in this room and he's talking the 25 man team. Everybody in this room wants to hit 300 and everybody wants to win 20 games if they're a starter. That one fouled straight back. He said all of you who are closers you want to save 40 games and all of you are set up man you want to have 30 or 40 holds. So everybody wants to be great. The fact is that most of you won't be. So if you're going to hit 240 you have to be the best 240 hitter you can be. That means you have to do it defensively. You have to do it on the base paths. And if you're the best 240 hitter you can be you're going to help the team win. And at the end of the day. What's best for you by definition is not best for the team. All right, so it's by definition manager. is okay. what's best for the team is what's best for you. All right. A follow up question. Let's see what Hector can do here. Against Fielder with a 1 1 count with one out. So how as a manager in the case whether it's Robin Ventura Jeff Bannister how do you massage egos. I mean that's got to be a tough challenge. You don't have to deal with the guys you write in the lineup every day. No, but the other player the right. role player. If it's Prince Fielder you write him in the lineup every day you and don't have happy. to go up. Yeah, you don't have to go up and tell him how good a job he's doing. He knows how well he's doing. You have to go up to the guys who are not playing every day. Your bench players your extra men. In the case of the Rangers they only have three guys on the bench. They've got eight guys in their bullpen. You got to go up to those three guys and say I know you're not playing but you have to stay ready for me because it's a long year and somebody's going to get hurt or somebody's going to need a day off. When I put you in you have to help this team win. And giving confidence to the extra men to the guys who are not getting steady work out of your bullpen. Telling them how much you need them and how much you're going to need them over the course of a long year. 
You got 25 guys for a reason. They all have to contribute. Mm -hmm. That's the art of managing is making sure that everybody is ready on a daily basis to help you win. 2 2 pitch. Right back to the bound. Hector goes to second for one, and that is a double play. Fielded beautifully by Nuessi. We go to the eighth. Nice job, Stephen. 11 to 2, Texas. In game two of the series with Texas, join us for the first pitch at seven right here on CSN Chicago. Colby Lewis's night is done. He went seven innings, gave up a couple of runs on six hits, and John Edward comes in. Edwards on for the fifth time. He has yet to give up anything, but he's only worked two and two thirds innings. So with one hit. He's done pretty well out of the bullpen a bullpen that they've really had to mix and match because it has been in a state of flux. Young man Edwards we're talking about board in Chicago. With Adam Eaton uh, stepping in. Edwards board in Chicago attended high school in Texas. And he also beat cancer so. What a wonderful story. Here he is in the big leagues. Eaton is one for three. Had a home run in this ball game in the third inning. Rangers with 16 hits and they lead 11 to 2. Our Xfinity High Speed Action Replay came in the third inning and this one not wind blown. This one crushed by Adam Eaton. Ties his career. High with three home runs in a season. He drove in two. He's now had eight runs driven in. The only runs that Colby Lewis gave up. 0. Oakland beat Detroit tonight. Tigers really scuffling 5 3. Minnesota lost to Boston 1 to nothing. No coincidence that the Tigers started to falter when Victor Martinez went down. High fly ball shading off to the left. It's the center field of Martin who covers a lot of ground. Shy Sox Bar and Grill at U.S. Cellular Field is the official postgame headquarters of the White Sox. Appetizers are half off on our full menu from Gibson's Restaurant Group after every home game. The two story bar features 70 flat screen HD TVs. Shy Sox Bar and Grill is located at the Gate 5 Plaza. A lot of people, Chuck, don't realize that the loss of Victor Martinez is a twofold loss. Not only do you lose the bat of Victor Martinez and what he gives you as a switch hitter in the middle of the order, but you lose protection behind Miguel Cabrera. Doesn't matter who you put behind him. I mean, you can put Cespedes behind him. You can put anybody behind him. They're not going to give you what Victor Martinez gives you. And it's a lot easier to pitch around Cabrera nowadays than it was before Martinez went down. 
Edwards, the delivery. Yeah, and uh, Verlander the other day had a rehab assignment in Toledo. He had the triceps issue. Not sure about his availability for the uh, weekend series against the White Sox in Chicago. They're playing that one by ear, but you know they're not going to rush him back as you had a look at Zach Duke, who's getting loosened up. Well, Detroit has come back to the back, Steve. They, they won nine of the first ten. Milky swings and misses, and he struck him out. We're in the top of the eighth. It's 11 to 2, Texas. Storyline in this ball game: Joey Gallo, young man recalled from Double A ball, major league debut at third base, two-run single, hit a home run, got a double. Not bad. Gonna wash the uniforms after the game. <laughs> And take his parents to dinner. Yes. Going the other way, LaRoche slices in. Opposite field base hit to Adam aboard. So LaRoche laces one to left. He's one for four. And bring on uh, Garcia, who's 0 for 3, hitting 316. Steve, in a ball game like this, you're down 11 to 2. Here we are in the eighth inning of play. Stranger things have happened, but is this as a as a player? Do you just short to memory? You turn the page and it's on to the next game tomorrow. Or when you're in that that clubhouse after the ball game, are you depressed? Not in this game because this is a game where you just had very little chance. You were down four to nothing in the first inning. You came back. Looked like you were making it a game at four to two in the top of the third, but Texas came back with two. Suddenly it was six to two, then seven to two. You just view it as one of those games where the opposition just beat you badly. You don't take this one forward near as much as you would, let's say, an extra inning one run loss where you had a lot of opportunities, you didn't cash in on them. But I will tell you that the great players that I talk to, regardless of the score, what they tell me is. The key to having a great year is never having a wasted at bat. Doesn't matter what the score is, doesn't matter what the count is, it doesn't matter what the situation is. Every at bat, you're bearing down in every pitch. If you never have a wasted at bat, you're probably going to have a very good year. Garcia. Fly ball to left. And a catch. And we are going to the bottom of the eighth here in Texas. We're going to have one last look at that young man, Joey Gallon, Beach League debut. Stick around, folks. Right here from Arlington on Comcast Sports Net.
We're in the bottom of the eighth here in Arlington, Texas. Moreland, Andrus, and Gallo scheduled to hit with uh, Moreland leading off here in the bottom of the eighth. Rangers with 16 knocks, and they lead 11 to 2. Mitch Moreland not having the greatest night, but he's been a very solid player for these Rangers because he can play well defensively. He fits very nicely in the infield at first. It's another base hit for Texas number 17. Follow the White Sox all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay previews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Andrews batting 237. Kicks inside. Andrews with an infield base hit in the first, walked in the third, grounded the second in the fifth, and walked in the sixth. 17 hits, my goodness. It's a Texas ball club. We've gone to the World Series in 2010. They lost to the Giants in five games, then that heartbreaking seven game series, Stephen, to the Cardinals in 2011. And that was gift wrapped. I mean, they came that close to winning the World Series. This team has been a very good team, but it's really difficult. You need a lot of luck. Some great players. You need some guys to come through, but when you're that close, it's very frustrating. And the manager of that ball club, Ron Washington, is in the Oakland system now, trying to help the issues that uh, the athletics have had defensively. He's an infield coach. Ron Washington's a terrific guy, and it's been chronicled about what happened here, but he was a good manager for them. That's well hit. That's going into left center, and that's all the way to the ball. One runner is in. Andrus going to third, sliding, and he is in with a triple. The Rangers with their 12th run on the night. RBI number 19 for Andrews. Drives this ball in the gap. This has always been a good triples ballpark. And this will roll all the way to the wall. And because it is a good triples ballpark, and his last triple was last July, the man up at bat needs a triple because he's a triple shy of the cycle. And this is fifth at bat. He is three for four, four of the eyes, as Steve Stone mentioned. He has scored twice, and this crowd is loving this kid, and why not? Time now for <laughs> ATT Universe Multiview. And as you can see, the center field camera. Looking in at Joey Gallo. You see him from the side. So Andrus who tripled on a line drive to left, scoring Moreland. Andrus on at third. Gallo, a one-two pitch. Tried the straight change, but couldn't get him to swing at it. And there's a look at the general manager of this team, John Daniels, who was taking a whole lot of heat early in the season when his team was what everybody thought was underachieving. Now that they're starting to heat it up. Like so many general managers who see their visions start to come to fruition, they look a whole lot smarter when their team is playing well. Sure do. 3 2 count, nobody out. Look out. Now we're batting 750. <laughs> he's doing pretty well. I got a feeling that he's going to probably slump from there, but it's a good start. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> That's rip foul to the right. Tell you what, 
He doesn't get cheated, does he, Stephen? Well, you're not going to hit 40 home runs in the minor leagues two years in a row by laying back and taking a whole lot of pitches. Four times in his major league debut. That one could have gone either way, however, it's Joey Gallo's night. Robinson Torino started this game behind the plate, took a fastball off his throwing hand from Jeff Samarja. Then took a foul ball off his throwing hand and left the game. Carlos Corcoran coming in and hitting for him in the third inning. You have Gallo at first, Andrews at third, Corcoran at the plate. Corcoran's one of the three, a couple of RBIs. In a 12 2 Texas ball game in the bottom of the eighth. Samarja went the uh, five plus, gave up uh, nine earned runs on 12 hits, gave up uh, surrendered a couple of homers, struck out four, walked one. Jennings in an inning gave up two earned runs. Messi delivers right field, that's deep, and that's good. That's a three run homer for Corcoran. So this being one of those nights that you just file away forget about and come back and get him tomorrow is this one all Rangers. A Ford home run replay it's a change up he goes down and Corcoran hits his second home run of the year. He's now driven in eight. He had a pretty good night for a guy that didn't start the game. Very good night. Fifteen to two, Texas. And we still are looking for the first out here in the bottom of the eighth. Very excited Ranger fan with a souvenir. Again, Detroit lost tonight. Twins lost tonight. Rangers trying to put pressure on the Western leading Houston Astros, who have a 5 4 lead at Minute Maid in the eighth on Baltimore. And in Kansas City, it's a 1 1 game. That game in the top of the eighth inning, the Indians and the Royals. Wade Davis in the game. He has yet to give up an earned run all year. Martin batting 231. The rest of the pitch. There's a lot of baseball to be played around the big leagues, and you, know, you just hope that you can get red hot with the month of June upon us and the weather changing. Backhanded by Sanchez. Nice throw over to Roche. Giddy Martin. See, it's something I've learned on this trip. I've learned a lot of folks believe me, sitting next to Steve Stone has been a delightful pleasure. So informative. The one thing I've learned on the field as well, Sanchez has some great hands. He's got a chance to be a terrific player. He's still a very young player. He's got a good baseball acumen. He's always been the youngest player, in whatever league he's played in. He played winter ball this year. That's really helped him out. And going up the middle, the range to his right is just outstanding. So he's going to learn how to hit better. 
When he does, he's going to be a terrific major league player. Fly ball out to Garcia off the bat of Alberto. He's now two for five. We have two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. The shield has a couple of hits in five at bats, four to one. And one of the things to think about is this is road game number 28. Sox have only played 22 at home. Mm -hmm. They all even out. And it gets a whole lot easier, even though with Detroit and Houston on the next six game homestand, it's not going to be an easy homestand, but it's a whole lot better playing them at home than it is on the road. Shallow fly ball to Sir Sanchez. Makes the grab. And we go to the top of the night. Texas with a 15 2 lead. Anthony Bass comes on for the 16th time is ERA 435 and if he's really good he can protect his lead 15 19 and 0 for Texas two run seven it's no errors for the White Sox. Everyone who started this game and went the distance had at least two hits in this lineup except for Prince Fielder. The best hitter on this team and a base hit the first time and then held hitless the rest of the way. It has been an offensive onslaught. For these Rangers. Gillespie the DH tonight. Is one for three batting 257. Anthony Bass. From Trenton, Michigan, attended Wayne State University, which is located in downtown Detroit. Well, the good news for the White Sox is they've got Chris Sale going tomorrow. You want to join us 7 o'clock Central Time right here on White Sox TV on Comcast Sportsnet. Always must see TV when Chris Sale goes to the now one of the finest pitchers in the game today. And I will go out on the line and tell you that even if he does play, Joey Gallo will not have as good a night against Chris Sale as he had this evening. I'm not sure when he's going to have as good a night as he had this evening because this was a phenomenal performance for a major league debut. Kind of Gillespie whips. Yeah, if you just joined us, uh, the rookie phenom with all the hype, but he delivered at least in his major league debut. Going three for four, hit a home run, drove in four, scored three. 
Also walked. It's not a bad major league debut. Cooper sounds going to say, hey, we need that jersey. They might say that. Alexi going the other way. Right to Chu in right field, and we're down to the final out for the White Sox. I think there's another oddity in this game. What's that, sir? I don't think that Joey Gallo has had an assist. I think you're right. I don't think he's had a put out. I don't about? think he's had a play. No bunts. He looked great defensively. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were at least anticipating somebody might try and drag a bunt down the uh, third base line. Drag it, push it, or do whatever, yep. but the young man has yet to be tested defensively. He looks pretty good offensively. Beckham is two for three, batting 277. Bass trying to end the ball game. Beckham looping fly ball to right. And this ball game is over as the Texas Rangers take care of business. Steve Stone winning 15 to 2. For the Rangers, a very exciting night, certainly for Joey Gallo, one he will never forget, nor will his parents. Unfortunately, it was a red hot team coming in and doing what they've done recently. Winning now 11 of their last 13, and they did an unbelievable job. Our player of the game is Joey Gallo. Who else could it possibly be? He was three for four with a walk. He hit a homer. He drove in four. He scored three. And a major league debut that they will be talking about all over the country tomorrow. Always a pleasure talking Sox baseball for my partner, Steve Stone. Steven, great job. Our director, Jimmy Angio, our producer, John Walker. What a staff in the truck. Our associate producer, Dave Ross, our tech manager, Mark Harper. And for the executive producer, Jim Porto Jr., this is Chuck Sworsky saying so long, everyone. Coming up next, Subaru Post Game Live with Chuck and Bill. You've been watching White Sox Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet.